What's up? My name is Techno here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be running through some good optimization tips for Dota 2 to get the most out of your PC. Of course, this video is not going to be focused at absolutely everyone. It's going to be focused on the lower end PCs, as if you're running a higher end PC, anywhere from the mid to high end, you won't really need to follow an optimization guide at all. So keeping that in mind, it'll be mostly based around lower end PCs. Without further ado, let's just get into it. First of all, make sure your Windows is up to date, as well as your graphics card drivers, and that as few programs are running as possible. Close pretty much everything you're not necessarily going to be using while you're playing the game, browsers especially, just to make sure you have tons of system resources available for the game, especially if you're short system resources. In the description down below, you'll find Windows 10, Windows 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your PC. With that out of the way, let's get into optimizing the game itself. Inside of Steam, we'll head across to Dota 2, right click and choose properties. In the launch options section over here, we can enter a couple of options that should help Dota 2 run with a better performance on your PC. First of all, hyphen high to make the game run in high priority mode, which should give it better CPU access and prioritize it above other programs. If you don't really know what you're doing customizing game settings or you've changed things already, you may want to add hyphen auto config and start up the game at least once. That way, it'll automatically configure your in-game graphics settings to try and get the best performance on your PC. If you've already added this once, you'll probably want to remove this if you're going to be customizing your graphics settings manually, which we'll be doing later on in this video. But you can add it, launch it once, and then exit and remove it. If you'd like to preload the Dota map, which is a good idea on lower end PCs, meaning you can load into the actual game itself faster after you find a game, you'll want to add hyphen map space Dota, and simply doing that, it'll load the Dota map in the background while you're on the main menu. It may take a bit longer to launch, but when you do get in game and you find a match, it should be much quicker to get into the actual match itself. If you're running the game in windowed or windowed borderless mode, you may want to add hyphen no D3D9EX to disable Windows Arrow and DirectX extensions related to it to get a little bit of better performance. Usually this will have no impact in full screen mode and when Windows Arrow is already disabled. If you'd like as well, you can type in no HLTV to disable HLTV in game, which could boost performance a little bit, though it may be more placebo than actual tangible FPS differences. You can also add hyphen no VR to disable VR, but of course these are just sort of modules left over in the source engine and usually won't have too much of an impact on gameplay performance. Once again, you can add it for possible placebo. You can add hyphen no joy to disable joystick compatibility with the game, which if you're a serious Dota 2 player, you're probably not using a joystick anyways. And with that comes the end of the launch options section. We can close out of this and actually fire up the game itself. Once again, for better general performance in the description down below, you'll find optimization guides that I'd highly recommend you check out. So now that we're on the main menu, we'll head across to the settings in the top left here. Then we'll head across to options, advanced options, and at the very bottom, we'll start with network quality. If you're playing on really far away servers or your internet is really bad, you'll want to select, I have a low end network. It may increase latency. However, things will be a lot smoother. If you're close to servers or have servers in your country and a relatively good internet connection, you can select, I have a high end network here. If you'd like to troubleshoot your network settings, you can click display network information on the side here to see information about at your network while you're playing the game to see if things are stable or not. Then we can head across to the video tab at the top and start customizing. First of all, you'll want to select use my monitor's current resolution unless you'd like to customize it here. If you select the option to customize, you can also change between windowed, borderless windowed and exclusive full screen. Having it on full screen will give you the best possible FPS. Then click apply when you've made changes here. You can change the rendering API from DirectX 11 to Vulkan, which may give you better performance on certain PCs, maybe better performance on AMD PCs. If you select this, a DLC will be downloaded, which is just a couple of different files. It's completely free, but you may see better performance or better compatibility on your PC if you're using Vulkan. Then we can change it from use basic 
basic settings to use advanced settings, but if you already have these sliders set, things will change quite drastically in your game. Usually, you'll crank this to whatever your PC is closest to. I'll put it on the fastest setting here, which has everything disabled, and head into Use Advanced Settings. Obviously, the lower you have your settings here, and the more options you have unticked, the better your performance will be. However, there's some things that I do really enjoy while being in game. First of all, animated portraits can add quite a bit to the experience. Ambient occlusion adds some nice lighting to the world, making things pop out a bit more than usual, and I'd recommend having this on. Ambient creatures adds little snakes and things that run around, and can add quite a bit to the immersive experience, though they shouldn't have too much of a performance impact. Grass will have a big performance impact and doesn't really add anything, and the aliasing I wouldn't have on unless you hate jagged edges. High quality dashboard, you can turn this on if you don't like seeing things on your screen that aren't super high quality around your shop and things like that. Then VSync, you'd usually always have this off unless you're getting screen tearing, where the top half of your screen and the bottom half don't match up perfectly and they seem to be tearing apart while you're playing the game. It can raise input latency a little bit, so your mouse may seem a bit laggy while you're playing. The rest of these don't really add too much to the experience, or at least in a worthwhile way that you'd want to lose performance for them. Texture quality completely depends on the amount of VRAM in your PC. Usually you can crank this up too high and forget about this. However, on super low PCs, you'll leave this on low. Effect quality, you can happily leave this on low and not miss out on too much. As well as shadow quality, you may want to push this to medium to have things look a lot more realistic while you're playing the game. Having them set to off may make Make things not really good while you're playing it. Game screen render quality, I'd absolutely recommend leaving on 100%, otherwise things may end up being a bit blurry. If you do choose to lower this, you should enable Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which is a relatively new option. In order to have this turned on, you'll need to enable anti-aliasing, and by doing so, you can enable this here. That way, you should get better, more crispy display while you're playing the game with no real impact other than maybe some visual glitches here and there. If you do have this enabled, you can comfortably lower the game resolution to maybe 75 or even 60%. Lowering this too far will make things look a little bit weird as things will glitch around the place. Usually you'll leave this around 80%, Fidelity FX turned on and forget about it. Maximum frames per second allowed, usually you'll want this to match your monitor whether it's 144 or 60, but you can crank this higher for more smooth gameplay. Dashboard maximum frames per second is when you're in the menu, start menu etc, you'll usually want to have this as low as possible, you don't want your PC heating up while you're on the main menu. Audio at the very top, there's not too much here you'd want to customize, other than changing your speaker configuration to better match what you have. Either speakers or headphones most of the time will give you the best experience. Also, of course, you'd want to disable open mic if you have this on. Push to talk is far better, especially if you can't handle your teammates or you don't want your teammates hearing what you're saying about them. Besides that, there's not too much else you'd want to customize other than maybe on the options section. You can enable a simple minimap background. It won't add to your performance. Neither will most of the options here, but it's just a general gameplay improvement in my opinion. Holding alt will show the player icons and if you invert it here it'll go from their arrows and colors to their player heads instead. I personally prefer this but of course this is your preference. Everything else here is pretty much what I usually have it as. You can have a look at what I have and customize it however you feel. These are my settings for the game. The best sort of optimization you can do besides optimizing your graphics is optimizing your items and abilities here best match your playstyle. For me, I'm very odd and I use WASD to move around the camera, don't judge me, so I need to remap my abilities around WASD and my items I try and keep as close to the left hand side of the keyboard as possible. It takes a while to get used to, these are my settings. If you're a hardcore Dota player, then you're probably cringing at what I have here, but I've played Dota for thousands of hours with these settings and that's how I enjoy it. Don't judge me. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno Behavior Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.